Now, you may be wondering why, as a photographer, I would be even suggesting the use of stable diffusion. It's very simple. As a boudoir photographer, we know that we have problems getting uh, ads on a lot of media. And that's because they don't like the revealing outfits in a boudoir shot. In addition, if we want to put posing guides up, we either have to have a large portfolio of all the poses we want and get the permission from each of those people to put them up. Or we can use something like stable diffusion to generate things that are more palatable to the marketing sensors. And we can also do something with it to come up with a posing guide. So let's take a quick look here and I'm going to walk you through some important things that you need to do with this and what we can get for output. So here are the extensions that I've got. It's good to hit check for updates every so often and make sure you hit apply and restart the UI so that you get the latest of all of the pieces that you want. But I'm going to take you to a very important uh, piece of the settings. So under saving images and grids, make sure that you always save all generated images. Now, the reason we're going to do that is we're going to make sure that in case this thing breaks, in case it fails, we're still going to have images. So if you're running five or 10 or 15 images, you'll at least get some of the images if something breaks. Now, it's very rare for this to happen with the installation that I've got here, but just in case. The other thing you want is you want to go down here and say save text information about generation parameter, well, not that one, uh, text file, next one down. Create a text file next to every image with generation parameters. And we're going to get into that, why that's important in a minute. But you'll notice I use Dreamlike PhotoReal 2.0 as my diffusion checkpoint. We're gonna come over here to text to image, and this is where you put your prompts in. Now I'm gonna open up one of the prompts that I used before to show you what that looks like. So here's what happens. This piece here is your first prompt, okay? So I want a woman Full body portrait, photorealistic, best quality, wearing a swimsuit. Again, swimsuits are acceptable for marketing purposes on things like Facebook. But having lingerie is not. I want long brunette hair, extremely detailed eyes and face, F1.2, proportional. I wanted a bodybuilder. Uh, format. So I wanted a muscular woman. The parentheses around it means this gets most important. Typically they start at the beginning and work their way down. But by adding this double parenthesis, it'll add importance to it. Now the next thing is the negative prompt. That goes into this box here. And that's things you don't want to see. So I didn't want low resolution. I didn't want bad anatomy. I ended up having to double some of these up because they were coming out deformed or disfigured. I was adding text and I was getting extra limbs. So I ended up, and again, you're going to play with this and it's going to be kind of a trial thing, but you're going to go through and put in your prompt as to what you don't want. Now it also tells you a lot of the other stuff that you did in the configuration. But the important things you have in here is this guy right here, seed. So we put our prompts in. For me, my sampling method, I've been using DPM Adaptive, restoring faces, and setting that to 40. Now pay attention to your width and height. Now what I recommend is when you're starting out, run a whole bunch of just portraits, just faces. So 512 by 512 is fine. And the reason you're going to do that is 
as you go through and create something like a posing guide, you can have that face put on every single generated image so that it looks like it's the same person every single time. Now to that end, that is this group version 0.0.2. All you do here is you take the face that was generated and you pop it in. I usually use GFP GAN, although you'll notice in the uh, text file that you saw, it wasn't this, it was actually the uh, code former that was used. And I talked about seed. If you have a good image, one that you really like, there's two things that you're going to want to do to replicate that image. The first thing is you're going to want to make sure that you put the exact same seed in here. Now, unfortunately, from time to time, what will happen is the image will modify a little bit. It's kind of a pain. Even though the seed's in there, it can still have an issue. And both for the ability to create poses that you want and to reuse an image, we have this control net. Now let's talk about posing for just a minute here. What you can do with the control net is you can take an image, drop it in, use open pose, which is going to look at the image and figure out how the body should be situated. Full means also capture the face, so it'll capture the facial expressions. I usually use just the regular open pose. This one here will generate that image for you, that little stick figure that it's going to use to determine how the body should be posed. If you get a good one that you like, I highly recommend that you hit the JSON and save it. And I recommend that you create a directory of your poses so that you have a quick place to go get them and regenerate them. This JSON file will save that stick figure pose, so you can just grab it quickly and easily later on. You can force it to use the control net being more important, but I've found that that image has a tendency to look artificial when it gets created. Tiled VAE. Now, as I mentioned up here when we're talking about width and height. If I'm going to do a full body, that has to be at least 768. If you're going beyond that, sometimes you'll get extra things in the screen. By enabling this tiled VAE and upping the numbers just a bit, that will prevent you from getting an extra person in the image for the most part. So once you've got your prompts in place, You've got this part here set up. I usually run one to begin with, and if I like it, then I will run a series of them. And you can put in uh, the color of the clothing that you want and things like that. So let's take a look at one that I did to give you an idea. So as you can see here, this was the first one, and I liked the way it came out. It was that bodybuilder pose. That's the text file that we just used. But I wanted that same pose, but now I wanted a two-piece suit. I can do that. I changed the script to two-piece swimsuit. Easy enough, right? And I have the same woman. And you'll notice that the hair looks a little different, even though I use the same seeds. That's why I said that the seed usually mimics what you saw before. But having something extra like adding the pose and things like that in helps quite a bit. And here we have a red suit. Again, red two-piece swimsuit. And there's my seed, right? You go back at the other one, I'm using the exact same seed. So that allows you to generate a pose and then use that pose both with a... Uh, lingerie on, something more appropriate for showing on a uh, boudoir pose guide, 
and it also gives you something suitable um, because you started off with the original, let's say in a lingerie shot, you're reusing that exact same pose. So you're not creating anything new. Now, you could take a picture of anybody in any pose, including yourself, and use this to show that pose. You could also go out and get something off of a stock photo site if you like that pose and use the pose and build a posing guide to help your clients understand uh, what they what they could do. Not necessarily what they will do. You could even set it up in such a way. You guys have seen me use uh, Milanote. Um, you could put it up on a site and say, okay, which ones do you like in here? Let the client pick the ones that they prefer. Now, what else can this mean to you as a photographer? Well, if we go back to the outputs. I don't want to show anything that isn't a, um, let's say, a boudoir shot because this is YouTube and I'll run into the same issues that I do with other things. But if you pay attention to what you're seeing, look at the different poses that we're getting, right? White, red, blue. And then I made it recreate the pose. And you'll notice what happened here was I used the same seed, but look at how her knee got bent a little bit more. If we look here, there's that same seed. That's the seed I started with. But then when I did the next image, all right, to show you a little better, there's the original image using the exact same seed. See how the image is just a little bit different. But once I use the pose, I have that leg exactly where I want it. It created different backgrounds for me. Now, one thing you can do as a photographer is once you get an image that you like, just let it go. Take out the pose. I still swapped out the face. So you'll notice it's the same look, same look every single time. But look at all the different poses. Yes, you'll get some weird things every so often, like an arm that's not where it should be. But taking from the perspective of a pose, you can use this as a way of creating ideas for poses as well. You find one in here you like, save it. Like, I like this pose. I can save that image into a pose. That's, doesn't always work that you get the two. You don't get the two in there. Let me find that pose. All right, there it is. Come down here and clear this off. It's as simple as taking that image, dragging it in, using open pose to then generate the new image and then when I come up here and it generate, I will get one posed similarly to that. And I say similarly because I didn't say control net is more important or the prompt is more important. I said balance it out. So as a professional photographer, I can create a pose guide that I can use as something to give to a client that has lingerie in it. So it looks like the way they're going to look the day of the shoot. I can also use the images that I like out of there, take a select view, and use those by making it into a swimsuit configuration, right? Change that lingerie into a swimsuit because the swimsuit will be much more appealing to uh, the Facebook and other marketing algorithms in theory, I'll get back to that in a second, because it's not showing uh, the same thing that the lingerie would show. And the reason I say the caveat is I have had issues where I try to put the photos up and it'll come back saying that it is uh, a body thing, that I'm, I'm shaming people. 
which is absurd. But usually when you uh, kick it back to them and a person looks at it, they clear it. But the other thing you can do with this is if you have a concept, for example, I respect bodybuilders and the bodybuilders I see have a lot of um, photos that are always the same. What if that bodybuilder did a boudoir shot? So you take all that muscle and again, these haven't been retouched. This is the original image. So there would be retouching that I would do on this image to uh, bolster those muscles and, and bring that three-dimensional back. But you get the image done and now you can show a bodybuilder how they would look in lingerie. Now, I'm not suggesting that you take people's pictures and modify them or use somebody's face. You'll notice the way I started this, I generated a bunch of faces so that I could get a face or two or 10 that I liked that I could use for this purpose. I didn't want to just go out and use somebody's face without permission. So I used a generated face instead. But again, doing proof of concepts, um, getting these things set up so that they're posed the way you want them to be, changing around the outfits and things like that are all things that you can do using stable diffusion as a professional photographer. Now, remember, you're not selling this as what you do. You're selling this as ideas for the client. So using this, make sure that you're very clear as to the purpose and that it's created. Because you don't want somebody to think that you're selling this stuff as your photography. Because you're really just saying, hey, this is uh, what we're proposing for uh, an image. You could even look at it from a perspective of hair. Do you have a particular piece of uh, hair that you liked uh, that it generated? Is there something in there that, like this wave design that a client might like? Um, and again, if you've got a bunch of these that are generated and your client says, hey, I would like to have wavy hair, you could pull these up. So I work with a hair and makeup artist. Having something like this where the client comes back and goes, I really like this hair. Well, then I can pass that on to the hair and makeup artist as an example as to what the client is looking for. So that's what I got for you this week. Again, on Thursday, I'll have another video where we talk about this from the client's perspective and what this means for a client. Um, again, when we do it and we're not doing it for um, showing things off like poses and things. We have to make sure that we have all the appropriate permissions from the client to use their images. So taking that a step further, if you have a client who wishes to have the stuff shown, but wants to instead, you want to use it for marketing and you can't use it because of the outfit, Another thing you can do in Stable Diffusion is this image to image. So you could get permission from the person and then create an image based off of the prompt that you put in, such as you, know, you want this to be a blue swimsuit, two-piece swimsuit, and have this drop into here and let this generate the image for you, but make sure that in your contract, you allow for the use of the image in generated, and you may even want to make sure that you allow the client to sign off on the final generated image if it's going to look at all like them. Because it's just fair that they um, 
get to sign off on the image. You'd want the image to look as close to the original person as possible, naturally. Um, and again, we've got Roop down here. You can make sure that the face gets put back in um, so that it matches the person's face. But again, that's a very specific clause that you'd want to put in your contract with your uh, client. And I will talk to you guys next week.